Okay, today we're making my favorite, all-time favorite recipe that is better than my mom's chocolate chip cookies and they're called salted, actually they're called the ultimate salted chocolate chunk cookie. Now, um, we're gonna start by prepping everything. So I have all of my ingredients already measured out. Always, every single time, be sure you have enough of every ingredient and measure it out before you start. Make your life much easier. So a couple of things. I'm gonna prep my cookie sheets. Um, I like using the silicone mats, um, but you can also use parchment paper. But you must do this step or your cookies will be a disaster. You've gotta either have parchment or the silicone. So that's ready. Next, I'm gonna prepare my chocolate. So I've already chopped up one. One, you do a full box, so there's two packages in each box. So I'm gonna show you how I came at that size of chunks. And you don't have to do this type of chocolate, the chunks. You can use just semi-sweet chocolate chips but I think this tastes better. It gives you uh, more of the flavor of the chocolate. It's chunkier, but it's, it's good with chocolate chips and if you're in a hurry, it's an okay way to do it. So I'm just separating all of these by, I sliced it this way and then all in between. And then I just turn the chocolate and then I cut it basically in four. So I start here, or I guess that's three cuts. Okay, so again, three cuts. And that gives you your perfect size. And get a good, sharp butcher knife. I have used a serrated one too, works okay too, but be sure it's this size. Don't try a little knife and think you're gonna get through it. It'll take you forever in a day. So that's our chocolate. One ingredient that's a little unusual in these cookies is the Malden salt, which is a flakier salt. It's um, it's a thicker consistency, so you see it's flaky and in chunks. And that's gonna go on the top of our cookies. Now you can get that, I get it on uh, Amazon, Jane buys it on well.ca, you can find it. It's very hard to find in the store, so I would recommend ordering it online. And it can take a little time to come in, so order it ahead. So now I'm going to uh, mix up my cookie dough. So the first thing it calls for is butter, and I like to just chop my butter before I throw it in the bowl because I just find it goes a little faster. So I'm going to drop that in. And again, I just use my uh, this type. I don't use the um, whisk. I like this and. My sugar, so three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, packed tight, and a half a cup of regular sugar. So you can see how tightly packed my uh, brown sugar is. So that goes in. And this, follow this recipe exactly. Do not change anything. It's perfect just the way it is. So uh, when it says to um, mix at medium, speed for five for two to three minutes i always do the top end so that they're nice and creamy so i'm going to mix this for three minutes and at a medium high speed and we'll do that in three minutes so jane if you can get a picture in the bowl and i'm just gonna scrape down the sides and be sure i get right down to the bottom to be sure everything's up off the bottom. It's a pretty sticky dough, so it's a little tricky getting down there. And once I have that done, 
I'm gonna add in my eggs. And again, I always just scrape the bowl to get every bit so that your ingredients are exactly to measure. And then my vanilla. I think it's one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And then I'm gonna get that going and I'm gonna go five minutes with this. Exactly. So I just start it fairly low till it's mixed in good so I don't wear it. Get it up to medium and leave it on there for five minutes. So that went five minutes. So Jane, you can see how beautiful and creamy and light it is. So now I'm gonna scrape that down real quick and again, get right to the bottom. So there's nothing stuck under there. And now I'm gonna slowly add my dry ingredients. So my dry ingredients is one and three quarter cups of flour, one and a quarter teaspoon, teaspoons of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I've mixed it up good. And now I'm just gonna slowly add it. I'm just gonna put it on stir and gradually add it. And I just add a bit and let it mix well. As soon as it's mixed, I add the next little bit. You don't want to over mix it at this point. So you can see as soon as I see the flowers pretty well mixed in, I add another. Measure, measure. You can to avoid this, just um, use a measuring cup to add it or a little a smaller bowl this mixer set up in a different area than I usually use it so I'm not used to it my counters are super clean so I'm just adding it okay and again, you don't want to over mix it, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to blast off my beater. And now, I'm going to bring this over and stir in my chocolate. So, just scrape off your beaters. Your beater. And even my kids say these are better than grandma's. Nobody likes grandma's cookies anymore. <laughs> True. <laughs> so there's my cookies. And it is kind of a sticky batter, so don't panic. That's normal. Just drop in your chocolate and mix it in good so that every bite of your cookie is delicious yumminess. So go right to the bottom and be sure you mix it in good. So like I said, there's a chocolate in every bite. It's kind of thick and heavy. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Just want to be sure that right to the bottom's good. Looking good. So now I'm gonna grab my scoop. This is the one that I like. It's fairly small. I don't know what size scoop, but it's little. And I'm gonna do t exactly, I say that now, exactly 24 cookies is what this will make. So I'm just gonna come on over here, my cookie tray, and 
I do a full like kind of a little bit rounded like that. Okay, so I'm gonna one. So again, good amount. Two. So I'm just gonna keep going here and do 12 cookies per tray and keep try keep them all a consistent size. It doesn't matter if they're round or not, they'll become their own cookie. Don't try to shape them too much. Kind of like your kids. <laughs> Here's mom's philosophy with her baking. Cookies and counseling. Yep. Cookies and counseling with Jill. And that's one tray and we're gonna make one more, but I'm gonna show you now how to put your salt on. So you just grab a pinch and don't be shy with the salt on top because it's delish. Don't worry about your heart. No. <laughs> Baking's good for your heart. So that is a batch of cookies. Now I'm gonna do the next tray, but I won't, I'll spare you that. This is gonna go in the refrigerator while my oven heats up. So for at least 10 minutes, you wanna cool these. If you don't, you're gonna have a disaster. Like I said, this recipe is exact. So 10 to 15 minutes in the fridge. Okay, so it's been about, probably about 15 minutes now. And you see that it's very firm now. There's no, it's, it's good and cooled, cooled down. So these are gonna go into a 450, I'm not making a mistake, 450 degree oven. Uh, the rack is a little higher than halfway. And they're gonna go for about seven and a half minutes. Not for about, for exactly seven and a half minutes. I find with my oven is perfect. Okay, that was, I pulled them out at six and a half just to have a look. Now these look a little underdone to me, so I'm gonna put them in for another 30 seconds. So I think my timer of between seven and seven and a half is still pretty accurate. Another 30 seconds. So that looks pretty good to me. So you want them fairly brown. It's okay if there's a little bit of lighter areas, but for the most part, you want them brown. I like them like about this cookie, but if you like them chewier, you're gonna enjoy a little underbake. So those are gonna cool while I put my next batch in. And you'll see um, some of your bigger ones might touch a bit, but they're easily separated after they cool. So there's two techniques to baking these cookies. The one that I did, my oven's fairly consistent in temperature, so I just bake them for the seven minutes. Um, I don't rotate them, but the actual recipe says that you put them in for three minutes and then turn them around and bake them another three minutes and check them. So we're gonna try that, see if it makes a difference this time. So that was three minutes. I'm gonna spin these around and put them on for another three. So now it's been five minutes. I'm gonna take my cookies off the hot tray so they've had time to flatten. So I have my nice um, mat here. So I'm just gonna take these over and put it right on my granite. And that's how mine are gonna cool. If you don't have that luxury, you can get a cooling rack and put your cookies individually to cool the rest of the way. So our three minutes, our second three minutes are up. I'm gonna take a look at them. Now these are under bake to me. So I'm gonna toss them back in for another minute or minute and a half. A minute. Okay, a minute. It's bossy. <laughs> minute is up. And 
Now Jane likes these a little underbaked, so we're gonna leave it at that for this batch, and then you, uh, we'll compare the two, and you can see the difference. So I'm gonna let these cool for five minutes on the cookie sheet. So our five minute cooling on the tray is done. So we're gonna bring these over here to finish cooling, and you're gonna see the two batches side by side. This has a lighter background than that, that silicone, but you get the idea. These are a little lighter. To me, the extra effort of spinning them doesn't look like it's really worth it. Now these were cooked about 30 seconds to a minute less. So um, you'll get more of a chewy consistency Whereas these, and, and even those side by side, I don't know that you could tell in a blind taste test. The difference. Yeah. So those are your most delicious ever chocolate chunk salted cookies. The end. Peace out. Peace out. And P.S. on those cookies, they're delicious frozen. So if you think you're going to put them in the freezer and your kids won't find them, they will eat them frozen and they're probably even better.